The taxi rolled to a stop in front of the iron gates, its headlights cutting through the early morning fog that lingered over the grounds. I peered out the window at the looming edifice, taking in the cracked stone walls covered in creeping ivy, the dark windows like hollow eyes staring back at me. Even in the hazy dawn light, Hollowhaven Manor looked foreboding. Here we are, miss. Hollowhaven Manor, the driver said. You sure you've got the right address? This place looks abandoned. I'm sure, I replied. Adjusting my oversized sweater, I stepped out of the taxi and approached the gates. The property had sat vacant for years since my great uncle Jacob's death, but now the deeds and keys belong to me. Emily Jacobson, new owner of Hollowhaven Manor. The hinges creaked loudly as I pushed open the gates just enough to slip through. Crunching up the gravel driveway, I felt the air grow colder and heavier with each step. I had hoped returning to my hometown and occupying Uncle Jacob's estate might bring some peace and escape from the relentless pace of the city and the painful memories it held. Yet even in the quiet countryside, ghosts of the past lingered. Ghosts I could never seem to outrun, no matter where I fled. I ascended the steps to the carved oak double doors, retrieved the key from my bag, and turned it in the rusty lock. The doors wheezed open, a wash in dust motes swirling through streams of morning light. I blinked, peering into the vast foyer where twin staircases curved up to a balcony beneath a massive crystal chandelier. Slipping inside, I relocked the doors behind me. My footsteps echoed through the silent halls as I explored room after room, most still furnished with antique wood furnishings shrouded in white sheets. I trailed my fingers over the layers of dust coating every surface, leaving meandering lines in the gray grime. Despite the manor's neglected state, I felt a morbid fascination with its gothic allure. As I wandered upstairs and selected the master bedroom for my own, a sense of foreboding tingled through me. Something heavy lingered in this place, like emotional residue steeped into the walls after decades of existence. I busied myself with cleaning and furnishing the rooms I planned on using during my stay. In the late afternoon, I settled onto the creaking four-poster bed and gazed out the diamond-paned window. The autumn colors were vibrant against the surrounding woods that stretched toward the horizon. For now, the emptiness and isolation suited me. I hoped in time the ghosts of the past would fade. But as I drifted to sleep that first night in the cavernous manor, I had the creeping sensation of being watched from the shadows. Chapter 2 Over the next few days, I fell into a routine of cleaning, reading, and strolling the grounds of Hollowhaven Manor. The fresh country air and quiet solitude lightened my restless mind and allowed me to pretend, at least for a little while, that the past year hadn't happened until the occurrences began. The first night, I awoke with a start, my heart pounding. The room was cloaked in inky darkness, but I sensed movement, a stir of air where there should be none. I fumbled to turn on the bedside lamp, flooding the room with a warm glow. No one was there. Yet I couldn't escape the prickling feeling on the back of my neck, the certainty I was not alone. The next evening, as I read in the library, curled in a leather armchair near the fireplace, my peripheral vision caught a swift motion. I turned just in time to see a shadow flit across the room and disappear through the far wall. I shook my head, blaming the tricks of firelight, and returned to my book. But the incidents escalated, passing reflections with no source, whispers floating on the edge of hearing down empty corridors cold spots spreading like deathly auras, and those creeping shadows darting and shapeless forever lurking at the corner of my sight. I considered leaving Hollowhaven, but a deeper part of me hungered for answers. Surely I wasn't going completely mad already? I began to spend hours scouring the manor for clues, running my fingers over the ornate wallpaper, peering behind dusty portraits, investigating rooms forgotten and shut off from the rest of the house. Most yielded nothing, but the night I discovered the hidden study, I felt certain answers waited inside. Chapter 3 The study was small, tucked away on the third floor behind a paneled wall that slid open at my touch. Inside, the cool air held a charge, a tingling sensation raising the fine hairs on my arms. I lit a few candles to illuminate the space. 
The flickering light revealed an antique desk, shelves lined with crumbling books, and a portrait hanging on the far wall. I inhaled sharply. The portrait was me. Or rather, an eerily accurate depiction of a woman who could have been my twin, painted at least a century ago, judging by the style. Those same wide hazel eyes set in delicate features gazed back at me as I drifted closer, spellbound. The only difference was her hair, raven black instead of my chestnut waves. The gilt frame bore an inscription, Lady Vivian Hollow, 1781. My mind whirled with questions as I examined the room. The books appeared to be journals, ledgers dating back generations, their pages yellowed and brittle. I gingerly lifted one and opened it. The script was faded but still legible enough to glean snippets. The poor girl has not been the same since the tragedy, a ghost of her former self. Sightings of unnatural shadows, whisperings in the night. Vivian claims she is haunted by. A loud crash ripped through the silence. I jumped, my heart pounding as icy fear flooded my veins. It had come from somewhere within the manor. I hurriedly replaced the book and grabbed the nearest candle, creeping from the study through darkened halls. Turning a corner, I halted, stifling a scream. All the paintings lining the corridor now featured Vivian's visage staring back at me. Her lifeless eyes seemed to follow my every move. This was no trick of the light. The shadows were real, and they knew I was getting close to exposing them. Chapter 4 The next day I sat in a cafe in town, the hot mug of tea doing little to warm my chilled hands. I had barely slept, spending restless hours sitting vigil near the fireplace wrapped in a blanket. I kept imagining phantom breaths on my neck and faint whispers calling my name, no matter how I tried to block them out. When pale dawn light seeped through the windows, I fled the manor, unable to bear another minute under its roof. Exhaustion must have been clouding my reason. I just needed rest, away from Hollowhaven and its strange influence. I nearly spilled my tea as a weathered hand gripped my shoulder. You must be Uncle Jacob's niece, said an elderly woman, releasing me to extend her hand. I'm Maeve. I worked as caretaker at the manor for years. I shook her hand. Emily. I didn't realize anyone still showed up there. The place seems abandoned. Maeve sighed, leaning heavily on her carved cane as she settled into the chair opposite me. I used to air out the rooms and tend to the dust, but it became difficult. And Hollowhaven has always had a reputation. I hesitated before asking, what do you know about Vivian Hollow? Maeve's already lined face grew somber. Poor girl. There was a horrible tragedy and accident that took her husband and child. Vivian was never the same. She spent years all alone in that house before her mind gave out. I glanced down as a deep chill ran through me that had nothing to do with the weather. She must have suffered terribly. Maeve leaned forward. There were always whispers that Vivian was haunted, saw things in that house that weren't of this world. That kind of grief does strange things to the mind. She studied me with piercing blue eyes. Tread carefully, Emily. The past always leaves its scars. I nodded uneasily and dropped a few bills on the table. I needed to uncover more about Vivian Hollow and what had happened at the manor all those years ago. But Maeve's words lingered with me long after she disappeared down the street. Perhaps some secrets were better left buried. Chapter 5 That evening I found myself wandering Hollow Haven's overgrown cemetery, searching the weathered headstones until I located the Hollow family plot. My breath clouded before me in the chill autumn air as I knelt by the engraved marker. Lady Vivian Hollow, 1760-1848 Beloved wife and mother, what really happened to you? I whispered, tracing my fingers over her name. Some mysteries are not meant to be solved. I whirled around to see an elderly man watching me, leaning on a gnarled walking stick. His silver hair fell to his shoulders, matching his long beard. Behind small round glasses, his dark eyes seemed to bore into my soul. My name is Elias. I know why you're here, Emily. His voice was gentle yet commanded an air of gravity. Then tell me I implored, standing up and brushing the leaves from my skirt. I need to understand. Elias motioned for me to walk with him between the rows of tombstones stained green with age. 
There are forces in this world, both light and dark, most souls are never meant to comprehend, he began. For whatever reason, Vivian was cursed to be sensitive, allowing her to perceive what others could not. I listened intently as Elias recounted the story handed down through generations. After Vivian's family died in a horrible carriage crash, she became enthralled by darker pursuits, desperately trying to contact her loved ones. But instead, she opened herself up to malevolent entities that latched onto her grief and solitude. Vivian was left haunted, terrorized by the mysterious manifestations until it consumed her mind completely. We stopped before a crumbling crypt bearing the name Hollow. Elias turned to me, his gaze solemn. Vivian's anguish left a stain, an imprint, if you will. Some believe those same entities remain, feeding off isolation and sorrow, seeking anyone who strays too near. His eyes bored into mine. You must leave Hollowhaven, Emily Jacobson, before history repeats itself. You cannot rewrite the tragedies of the past. Chapter 6 Over the next few days I wrestled with fear and indecision. Part of me wanted desperately to flee Hollowhaven and never look back. But Vivian's story awakened my empathy. Perhaps we were not so different, both seeking refuge from pain and finding only deeper anguish. I needed to know how to help her find peace. In the early morning hours when the manor was at its most still, I concentrated on sending out whispered pleas to any spirits lingering, begging them to give me a sign, show me how to end this curse. The only replies were shuddering breaths on the back of my neck and faint laughter echoing down the halls, mocking my efforts. When I could no longer endure the stifling isolation, I sought out the local occultist Elias had mentioned. The sign over the door read Morwen's curiosities and my entry triggered chimes singing an eerie melody. Inside the cluttered space smelled of dust and exotic spices. Morwen turned out to be a tall woman with flowing auburn hair and a flowing dress. Her energy put me instantly on edge, but I persisted. You wish to cleanse a home of unwanted spirits? Morwen raised one eyebrow incredulously. She gestured at the artifacts lining the shelves. Trinkets and rituals cannot banish what lingers in your own mind. I shook my head firmly. Please, I know these entities are real. I just need to release them, set them free somehow. Then Hollowhaven will be at peace. My pleading must have swayed her. Morwen ventured to the manor herself and confirmed the presence of dark forces that had saturated the home for ages untold. I shuddered as she described the twisted auras leeching negative energy from the living. That night I could barely sleep, nervous about what the coming dawn would bring. Chapter 7 Morwen arrived promptly at first light, her willowy frame draped in robes of flowing black, face set like stone. She directed me to sit inside a circle of pale sand etched with symbols on the library floor. As she lit candles at five points around us, the very air seemed to thicken. Settling across from me, Morin closed her eyes and began chanting in an ancient tongue. Her voice rose and fell like a hypnotic song. At first, nothing seemed to miss. But then the candle flames lengthened into writhing tongues and the shadows around us deepened, undulating and twisting. I gasped as smoky forms rose before me, featureless specters that glided through the air-leaving trails of inky darkness. And still Morwen's chanting continued, her voice growing tighter in exertion. The temperature plummeted. My breath misted as fear slithered up my spine. Then I saw her. A woman, her face blurred and indistinct, save for the gleam of malevolent hunger in her pale eyes. Vivian. Her ghostly hands grasped desperately for me as mournful cries echoed all around. She was trapped, lost between worlds. Enslaved by forces she had failed to comprehend or control. Icy tendrils encircled my arms, my neck, and I realized the ritual had opened a door I could not close. The entity swirled faster, screeching in fury at being exposed. Fear seized me in its crushing grip. This was no mere haunting. This was an ancient evil that had destroyed Vivian. And now it hungered for my soul. Chapter 8 Morwen's chanting faltered as she stared wide-eyed at the swirling dark mess. Her outstretched hands trembled, beads of sweat glistening on her pallid face in the candlelight. Break the circle! I shouted. 
but she seemed frozen, trapped in trance. The unearthly shrieking and howling rose louder. Shadows encroached on the edges of the flickering candle ring like a rising tide of oblivion. I felt deathly cold envelop me. Vivian's wraith lingered before me, her distorted features twisting in agony. With enormous effort, I fought against the cloying heaviness, struggling through the writhing darkness toward Morwen. My numb fingers shook as I grasped her chalk and scraped a line through the sand circle. Instantly, the chaos ceased. The candles extinguished, leaving only tendrils of gray smoke. Morwen's shoulders slumped as she let out a sharp breath. I realized my face was wet and I tasted salt as the tears streaked down my chin. We remained in deafening silence as the morning rays stretched over the floorboards. Then Morwen turned to me, her expression grim. Some evils are beyond any ritual or incantation, she whispered. I am sorry I could not free her or you. This curse is beyond my power to break. Gathering her satchel, Morwen swiftly departed and left me alone with the lingering horror. Vivian lingered here, trapped for eternity by forces she could never escape. Darkness had stained Hollow Haven Manor down to its foundations. Realizing the truth, I knew what had to be done. Chapter 9 The drive back from the hardware store was a blur. Inside the manor, I went methodically from room to room sloshing gasoline over every surface, the acrid fumes stinging my nose. Up the grand staircase, coating the banister. Over the portrait gallery, generational faces staring. Into the master suite, my suite, the four-poster bed where this nightmare began. Descending to the main hall, I trailed the puddle of gasoline out the front doors and onto the stone steps. I stood on the gravel drive, surveying the manor one last time. Flames would exorcise its lurking evil. Fire would set Vivian free. As I flicked open the lighter, a cold wind snatched at my hair. Anguished whispers clawed inside my mind, begging, warning. I squeezed my eyes shut. I'm sorry, I choked out. It's the only way. I clicked the lighter and dropped it onto the gasoline trail, watching the flames erupt and race toward the door. Soon they roared from every window, black smoke pluming skyward. The fire ravaged the walls Vivian had paced hall after hall, freeing her from the prison of this house turned hell cape. Walking to a safe distance, I watched the inferno consume all evidence of the sinister past. The tragedy that ruined Vivian Hollow could now never hurt anyone else. Here was an ending she deserved long ago. Night fell slowly as the flames dwindled among glowing embers. In the morning, I would leave behind this ashen ruin. Finally, my soul could be free. It has been one year since I burned Hollowhaven Manor to the ground. The townsfolk whispered of a deranged arsonist. But I knew the truth. I had seen what lurked inside those walls. It needed to be destroyed. With the manor gone, I felt the darkness had lifted. I found a modest apartment in the city near the hospital where I took a job as a nurse. Keeping busy helps quiet the lingering memories. But some nights I jolt awake, heart pounding. And for an instant, I see Vivian's ghostly face hovering over me, her dead eyes staring. Traces of the manor's evil still taint my soul. The dreams persist. I roam the manicured hospital halls at night when all is still, sensing movement in my periphery a shiver up my spine. Therapeutics do little to halt the steady unraveling of my mind. Vivian suffered the same tortured fate. She could not banish the entities with fire or ritual once they poisoned her thoughts. I fear no amount of distance or distraction will cleanse me fully.